say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn. Kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Hi. Good afternoon, Mr. Farmer. Do you know what? What? Do you know this show has been on the air almost four years? We're approaching our 200th show. Wow. Can you believe wow. that? And we've made such good friends along the way. Yeah, we have. This is our Christmas show. And tonight, we're going to talk about tradition. You know, most of the things that we do are talked about right here. That's right. At the table. You know, over the years, we've talked about how important tradition is with us. We have some friends who are keeping traditions alive when it comes to food preparation right. and building things the old way, farming, mm -hmm. gardening. That's right. Think about some of our guests that we've had on frequently. Oh, I like Lois and Bobby Joe. I really enjoyed them. And we've had we've made such genuine friends along the path. So tonight, now last week we put together our little band, put together some music. I heard the bells. That's right. So we're going to play this in the background and show you just a little clip of some of our farm critters who are our friends too that's right um parents grandbabies family friends so here's a quick little music video of four years that have almost flown by wow so let's take a look at that real quick
Now, on our show, it's real. There's nothing scripted. A lot of times we don't know what we're going to make until the day of. You never tell me anything. That's right. <laughs> and, you know, we have folks on who aren't necessarily television people. Right. But somehow or another, they come into our home and they're very comfortable and mm -hmm. we're comfortable with them. Recently, we had a friend over. She just lives up the road. Her name is Dolly. Very and, you know, when we started talking about her family. You know, nowadays Christmas means lots of gifts, lots of money being spent. Mm -hmm. Back in the old days, I used to talk to these old timers. If they got a piece of hard candy right. or a piece of fruit. Fruit was big. Let's listen to what Dolly says about early Christmases. Now, what do you remember Christmases? What do you remember getting as a kid for Christmas? What, what's, your, what's your earliest memories of Christmas? I can remember a lot of things during the Christmas time. My dad, he wouldn't buy it, two or three bananas. He would go out and buy a whole stalk and then oranges and apples. Now that was a treat. Uh, well, we Man. didn't get anything like that only at Christmas time. And uh, at uh, Christmas, why, we'd put out our pans. Instead of stockings, we had just a pan that you put out. Well, I'd get up the next morning, there'd be an apple and orange and banana and candy in it. What do you remember? What was, the, what was like the, the most fantastic gift you ever got? You thought, I can't believe I've got this. I got a dial and a little chair, pretty good sized chair and pretty good sized dial. I've still got it. You've still got the dial? I still got the dial and I've got the chair. You appreciated things back there then because you didn't get them all every day of the week. All right, now obviously we love our grandbabies. Yes. Now they can't be here right now because mom's got a new job. They've still got school going They've on. They've still got bit. school yeah. going on, so they couldn't make it. But I absolutely love messing with them. <laughs> They enjoy it too. They enjoy it, but you know, when I, when I read them the Christmas story, I always make mistakes yeah. on purpose and their reactions are over the top. So let's, <laughs> let's talk about the grandkids and the almost proper reading of A Night Before Christmas. Okay. All right. How about The Night Before Christmas? You like that book? I never read it. <laughs> well, we're going to read it. It's a beautiful story. This story was written in 1822 by a New York clergyman named Clement Clark Moore. And it goes like That's this. That's a good name. That's a good name. Twas the night before Christmas. Went all through the house. Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums slid under their beds. Danced in their heads. Oh, get wrong. And Mama in her kerchief, and I in my cap, I just settled down in a big bear trap. For a long winter's nap. <laughs> I get it wrong all the time. Papa, can we go play with Moses? Let me tell you something about Moses. Now, we'll go, here, here's the deal with Moses. We've got to feed him, but he protects the sheep. He's a working dog, so that means we really can't pet him too much. So basically, we just have to, like, you know, wave at him from outside the fence and... Give him his food because he has to bond with the sheep. When out on the lawn there rose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. What could be happening? Away to the wind as I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters, and threw out the trash. <laughs> threw up the trash. Oh man, I've got to put my glasses on. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave a luster of midday to a radioactive glow. With two objects below. Oh, Grandma should bring me my glasses. When what to my wondering eyes should Ow. appear? I like her. <laughs> but a miniature sleigh and a huge eight-point deer. And, and eight tiny reindeer. Oh, my glasses. Okay, Grandma, can you run and get Puff's glasses now? <laughs> hang on, hang on. Here we go. Hey, this is the serious part. With a little old driver, so lively and quick, he jumped right over the candlestick. That's not wrong, but Oh, you didn't Adolf. say that. I knew in a moment it must be St. Nick. A wink of his eye and twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. Do we go pet Moses? We go pet Moses? 
Do you, Mo, Moses is a working dog. We, we can't pet him too but much. He's, he's so cute. I know he's cute. He looks like a polar bear, but we got he just... He's not a polar bear. He's not cold. But he's not he, cold. He looks like a polar bear. <laughs> yeah, he does. But I heard him exclaim as he drove out of sight, Merry Christmas to all. And to all, good night. Isn't that a wonderful book? Now, I just want you all to know that Christmas is coming, and I hope you've been good, and I hope that... It's going to take six years. Whatever that means. <laughs> but you know what? I hope you've been good. I hope when I say things like, you know, we can't pet Moses, I hope you're not sneaking out there and petting Moses because he's got a bomb with the sheep. You sure wouldn't do that, right? No. Because Christmas is coming. The goose is getting fat. There is a surprise coming. Just, I like just surprises. This. But you know what? Here's something that's very special to me. Tradition. Mm -hmm. There are certain traditions that we should carry on year to year. There are certain memories of our parents and our grandparents that we should not let go of. Always remember. Always remember. That's part of our theme. Think about how they did things. Think about how far we've come and mm -hmm. appreciate what they did. The old-fashioned ways are okay. still good. And a lot of people are really enjoying the old-fashioned ways. There's a friend of mine who wrote a book. It's called Kogan's Woods. And when I was with Kentucky Field, uh, we did this story. And it was a Christmas tradition. Now, I talked to the Department of Fish and Wildlife, and I talked to Tim Sloan, who's my old boss. And I said, Tim, I don't want to let that tradition go. And he gave us the blessing. I want to thank the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife for letting us continue this tradition. So tonight, we thank author Ron Ellis mm -hmm. for sharing a bit of his life with us a book that I read in the deer stand and I almost fell out because I was in <laughs> tears by the end of the, I visualized this. So thank you, Ron Ellis, for sharing this with us. Thank you, Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife, for allowing this. Here's Kogan's Woods. It had rained in the night, the fog drifted up from the low place of beside the road. My father threaded the old white mercury through the twists and turns of the Cumbling River Road as we listened to the weather report coming up from a station in Cincinnati. We always hoped for wet weather, for a soft, steady rain to soak the woods and soften the paths we would soon be traveling in Kogan's Woods. <laughs> This fellow right here, Ron Ellis, wrote a book called Kogan's Woods. 
Somebody gave it to me years ago, said, you gotta read this. So I climbed up in a tree stand and I started reading this book. Yeah. And I thought, man, oh man. Anybody who's ever hunted with, with a relative or especially your father, squirrel hunted back in the day when that's all we had going on. Yeah. It's half to reading. The taking of the gear from the trunk was done with a great deal of ceremony. Dad poured himself another cup of coffee from the thermos, lit a cigarette, and then stood quietly for a few minutes just studying the darkness and listening. Though I was close by, I suspect he was during those brief moments, very much alone with his memories and with familiar sounds and voices I could not hear. We spent some time loading our vests with shells, green Remingtons for me and Blue Peter's holes for Dad. Dad finished his last cup of coffee and another cigarette as we stood there in the dark. We traded shotgun shells without fail before going into the woods on every hunt. It was a good luck ritual, a wish for a successful and safe hunt. We placed the good luck shells, which is what Dad called them, into the magazines of the 410s and pumped them into the chambers, the little guns clicking and throwing metallic echoes in the hills it came back to us in the dark, and then, and only then, we were ready. This guy was sitting on a stump. Belden County Fox. Belden County Fox. Isn't he beautiful? Look what a. Now, if that's what you that's what you waited for all day. Oh, absolutely. Look at his feet. I'm looking for your shell. When my dad uh, died, um, uh, left in his hunting uh, gear, he left a box called Keepsake Shells. And inside these boxes, marked as such, were all of these shotgun shells, which meant something to him and he knew would mean something to me. And he would write a note about the day and date it and say what we had killed or seen or what we hadn't killed or if we had any shots at all. But he would roll them and take his, take the shotgun shell that meant something and he would place it inside of the shell like such. And I'm, this one he just decided he would put in here by itself. It's flattened out and we'll just, you would, you want, would you like to read it? Can I? Sure. Why don't you read it? Okay. This is from George Ellis. This is an honor, by the way. Well, he'd, he'd, Especially he'd, after reading he'd be honored <laughs> to know that you were reading it. He, he loved Kentucky, a field, and happy hunting ground. He says, my best day, underline, September 4th, 1988. Hunting alone using Remington Model 1100 Auto in 28 gauge. Also using new 28 gauge load, Federal Premium number six. It says, uh, large, very tall pig nut near Warline, Warline fence, mm -hmm. six shots. Uh, waste one. Waste one. He always said that. Waste <laughs> one, you know. <laughs> and six grays. He got the limit. Left two in the tree, still cutting. Yeah. He walked to the war line point with an empty gun, picked up the green 12 yep. gauge shell. There, there's somebody there's else. He's picking up somebody, somebody else's, else's shell. He says, there, red letter day. George E. Ellis. He left you things. He left you clues. He left you time pieces. He left you, he left you time capsules. You might say. He did. He did. And you're still finding those today. I am. If, if he wrote about it, it was an important day for him. Your dad was an unreal kind of guy who left memories for his kids, and I wish, I hope that that my kids have those kind of memories for me. There it is. There it is. Now you know what he'd say. Put a note in it, <laughs> so that you always remember. I mean, and he I mean, would. This is an important day. Yeah. You know, his gun, he was a great squirrel hunter, loved squirrel hunter, and he was without the world to you. Can I keep that? It's your show. Put a note in it. I will. Okay. I certainly will. Yeah. With his shotgun cradled in his left arm, Dad started back down the path, snow building on the shoulders of his hunting coat and the curled brim of his faded green Jones cap. The light was dim and it was quiet enough that I could hear the click of his Zippo lighter as he walked away from me. I saw a flame move toward a cedar to his right, and then a little flame flickered within the webby green darkness of the cedar limbs. In seconds, several more tiny flames were flickering there, then Dad moved to his left and more tiny flames appeared in the tree limbs on that side of the trail. 
Before he was done, he had passed down through those cedars and lit a hundred or more white candles that he had placed in the branches on both sides of the trail while I was off hunting. The entire thicket was illuminated with white candlelight and more snow was coming down. The whole place looked very much like the inside of one of those glass balls you shake to make it snow, and then the snow settles down on the Courier and I's Christmas scene. And there was Dad, standing at the far end of the lighted tunnel with a big smile on his face. Merry Christmas, son, he yelled. And then he walked back through the candlelit cedar trees and stood next to me on the ridge in the gathering dark. I always wanted to do this up here all of my life, he said. This place has always felt more like Christmas to me than any place I've ever been. There's just something about the way the hills roll and the way the light comes in here in the evening. It gets all stained with the color of these cedars. August 21, 1965. Second squirrel of two killed on ridge at log site using the Winchester Model 42. Ron with me on hunt, he got one. This shell, good old blue, a Peter's number six, first one used from a box purchased on a trip to Ball Knob, Arkansas. Young Gray leaving Hickory Tree after I had killed one. Lovely morning and a lot of fog. With him whispering to me out of the dark in a soft, comforting voice, suddenly I was 12 years old again as we waited together on daybreak in Kogan's woods. I remembered that he said, It's important to remember, son. It's, it's so, so important. important to remember. All right, now, we had a surprise on last week's show. Yes, we did. And I can obviously not ask you to marry me because we're already married. But it'd be fun to get married again. We already did that. I know, we did. In Hawaii. Okay. So this, this gift is a little different. Okay. I'm just going to, well, I'm just going to bring it in. I hope it's a camel. It's not a camel. All right. Now, when you, don't look, I'm not. Don't look, when you see this, you may think, well, it's just like anything else, but it's not. Okay. It's very different. It's a huge diamond. No, it's very different from anything else we've ever got. Did you adopt a baby? No, 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 <laughs> no. All right. On three, two, bring it in, Nick. <gasps> a <laughs> no, puppy? You were not expecting no, that, No, I was not. What kind of puppy? All right. I want you to guess. <gasps> okay. One of those ones that we saw, you did a show with the guy. Yes. Oh, he smells so good. Is it a girl that or a boy? That is a boy, and it's a border collie. Does he get to stay in the house? Sometimes, but this little guy right here is going to have a job. We're going to train him to round the sheep up when we let him out in the field. So, what do you think about your baby? I think I kind of like him. He loves me, Sophia, too. What, what do you think, Aww. Murray or Murphy? I like Murray. You like Murphy? Mur Murray what do you or think? Murphy? Are you a Murray? What about your baby? What about your baby? He's so sweet. He is sweet. He's going to be our sheepdog. Now, make sure you check out our Facebook page, Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. Like it. All you have to do is hit like. Boom. You're our friend. We can talk. We can discuss recipes. Ask any questions. We'll try to answer them. Also, if you've missed a show or five or 200, check out timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. We're talking to people all over the world and they're having so much fun on YouTube. So I want to take this minute to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Especially the family of Vicki Pay. Very Merry Christmas. And you know what? It's all about good times, good friends, and good eats, and puppies. Aww. See you next week on Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. He loves a you. Baby. <laughs> to order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502 319 0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to CKY Canoe, Kentucky, Furniture World Superstore.
housewarmings. Lodge Cast Iron. Tater Knob Pottery and Farm. 